parents, students, and educators were largely relieved that the state denied a request to send the National Guard to police students at Brockton High School amid a rise of reports of student violence. But the safety issues remain, and at an emergency school committee meeting last night, they blamed local officials for letting the situation get so bad in the first place. For the past 103 days prior to asking for help from the National Guard on February 9th, what policies and procedures have you put in place to protect our students and staff at BCS, BHS? Um, I think I know the answer, and that's none. Now to discuss all of this, I'm joined by Leon Smith, Executive Director for Citizens for Juvenile Justice, and Michael Curry, NAACP National Board Member, and a Brockton resident whose sons actually graduated from BHS. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us. God, thank you for having me. So I guess my first question to you uh, Michael, is how do we get to a point where a school goes from having, you know, let's say disciplinary issues and then it elevates to where they want the National Guard to come in and help? Well, I mean, I, I hate to simplify it this way, but somebody was asleep at mm. the switch, right? They weren't paying attention to what the students needed, what the teachers and families needed. Um, you know, some of the basics around this for any of us run an organization is policies and procedures. It's um, uh, roles and responsibilities. It's accountability. Who's accountable? Uh, it's making sure that you have the resources you need to provide security for the students and for the faculty. I don't know how you not how you miss that, but it, clearly it was missed here. And then, of course, it led to some school committee members calling for the National Guard, which, of course, is the wrong option. And the work that we all do is not about um, armed guards. It's about arming our students with the resources and the and the the training and the, and the teachings they need to succeed. Leon, when you heard that the school committee members wanted to take this step, the state ultimately denying it, what, what were you thinking as someone who works in this space as well? I found it incredibly, incredibly problematic, especially coming from people who are in district leadership, um, to have them advancing an idea that is so far away from what's developmentally appropriate for young people, but also it reflects a mentality towards school safety that is completely binary and extreme. School safety isn't at one extreme hardening your schools and making it all about surveillance control um, and armed people or chaos. There is a broad, robust middle ground of best practices, student supports that when implemented properly, you're able to meet and address student need. You're able to be proactive about safety by being able to de-escalate conflicts before they arise. The fact that that middle ground, that reasonable space where that should be where we're having the conversation. The fact that leadership completely ignored that and went to the extreme, again, it's incredibly problematic and young people and parents deserve better. You know, we actually have uh, some sound from that school committee meeting in Brockton last night and a mother of a BHS graduate actually speaking to that point. So take a listen. You have children afraid to walk these halls every day. Sending in the National Guard will not alleviate their fears. Taking away their phones will not eliminate their stressors. If you treat every student like a criminal, you strip them of their dignity and yourself from creating a positive environment with mutual respect. So, Michael, my other question for you is, how would that even have operated in a school, something like the National Guard? Because we know that Brockton, in the past, had said they did not want school resource officers in the school, set up in the way that was outlined by the Brockton School Committee. Yeah. So how would then a National Guard unit operate in the high school? Yeah, I don't, I don't think they had all of that had been worked out, and yeah. I'm glad that Governor Healy turned it down. I have the unique position of having called for the National Guard during mm -hmm. COVID. Mm -hmm. I would often talk to governors to our Secretary of Health and Human Services and say, hey, we need guards. Brockton Neighborhood Health Center was an example of that. Yeah. Or Brockton Hospital provide the support that we needed. There's a lot of complexity to those decisions, and it's not done lightly. The governor made the right choice here. I, I think just to add on to that, I think what, what I appreciate is the folks on the ground, the parents, the students that are speaking up, being active, and saying, that's not what we need. What we need you to is to hear that the disruptor needs services, right, those young people that are acting up, and the disrupted needs services, those people who are their educations are being um, disrupted by those actions in school. And, and I want to I stress this because people don't know this. Brockton Health Center, which I represent, had offered to provide a school-based health center mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, the health, in the school so that you had resources for trauma, for mental health, behavioral health support, and that got caught up in the red tape of Brockton. $1.5 million was spent 
on these modular units to sit right outside the school so that students could come out and get the services they need, and it's caught up in the red tape. Monday, uh, Brockton Neighborhood Health Center is ready to deploy uh, behavioral health clinicians to the, to, the health, to the school to provide those resources. So often what happens is people are waiting to, to lean in and provide support, and they're held from doing it. Well, we also know that the district is what, in a $14 million deficit at this Absolutely. point? There's an embattled superintendent that actually attended last night's meeting. And the students and the parents left trying to figure out what's going to happen here, right? Absolutely. And to Michael's point, yeah. you have support services that are there that can directly address the underlying needs and the root causes of this behavior, and they're not being allowed in. I also want to highlight that at the end of the last legislative session, our legislature acknowledged the mental health impact of the pandemic. Mm. As part of the mental health law, they required school districts at a district level to implement trauma-sensitive learning models and positive behavioral interventions and supports, as well as at the school level requiring models like restorative justice, conflict resolution, collaborative problem solving. Again, that's not a suggestion, that is now the law. And so I have a question, is Brockton even compliant with that aspect of state law? Because I believe mm -hmm. if they had implemented those, things would not have gotten to this point. And just the 20% yeah, yeah. in school and out of school suspension rate is unacceptable. Um, that means that they weren't paying attention to what students need, and I know that's the work that you do. It's, di it's disturbing to me that they let it get this far out of hand. Yeah, and I know students are also disturbed and concerned. We actually have some sound from a sophomore at uh, BHS. I'm really concerned about the lack of answers here. So let's take a listen to that. It is time to heed the voices of youth, parents, community members, and leaders who have long called for genuine solutions. You lack answers. It's crucial to listen, collaborate, and act with the community rather, imposing, rather than imposing flawed strategies like involving the National Guard or increasing suspensions. What do you then, when you're talking about young people, your sons went to Brockton High School. I mean, I can't imagine going home telling my parent, well, the National Guard might be here within the next week. Yeah, well, I talked to my sons about yeah. it, and I, uh, my older son said to me, he said it wasn't as bad as when we were there, right? Mm -hmm. they, they had great experiences at Brockton High, but they have been reporting to me over the years that it's gotten worse since they've, they're in college now, right? Well, at least the middle one is in college now. He said, Dad, it's gotten worse at Brockton High, and things have gotten out of control. N no one, uh, even the young people don't want National Guard there, right? That, I, I have images of the 1960s exactly. and armed guards and the civil rights movement um, and the, the disruption. I was a kid on those buses to Charlestown mm. where they were protecting us as seven-year-olds to go to school in Charlestown. There's a trauma that comes from that. Yes. Equally, I would argue, yes. equally as much as seeing a fight in school is having someone with a weapon in, in or out of your classroom is pretty troubling. So I think, I think young people are in, in a clear alignment that that's not the option. Let's hear them. Mm -hmm. And when we say hear them, I always say there's a reason why a kid is violent in class. There's a reason why mm -hmm. someone takes drugs or sells drugs. I think Brockton has a unique opportunity here. Turn this crisis into an opportunity to really solve for the underlying issues. Yeah. And to that point, what message does it convey where the first solution is something extreme like the National Guard? Mm -hmm. What are you saying about young people? There are young people who've been impacted by trauma. There are young people with mental and behavioral health issues who are clearly not being seen. When you advance such an extremist idea as a National Guard, you are basically projecting to everyone that these young people are nothing more than problems to be managed, rather than young people, still developing young people, who need additional supports and services. And to me, that's where the focus should be. It should be on how do we address what's at the root? How do we help our young people get better? Because when you provide the supports and services that help young people get better, you end up helping and improving your entire school climate. I'm also thoughtful of every time, Leon, there seems to be a solution that is gone to an extreme. When we're talking about violence in school, school shootings, it's like classrooms that pull out from the corner and arming teachers. In this case, with behavioral issues that seem to have gone neglected mm -hmm. or not addressed for a very long time amid a deficit and a, and a superintendent that's under question, it, the solution is the National Guard. Like, mm -hmm. that, that seems like... The solution is to go local, go small, and 
from what it looks like, apply the, the laws and measures that are already in place. That are, that are simply already in place. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why these practices like restorative justice and mediation and collaborative problem solving keep coming up. They work. You can look at cities like Los Angeles, San Francisco, Oakland, where they have been implemented with fidelity and when they have been adequately funded and staffed, not only have you seen school violence go down, mm -hmm. school suspension, schools arrest go down, you even see graduation rates go up because it helps make your school more welcoming. Kids want to go into a school building where they feel their needs can be met, where they feel seen and acknowledged and affirmed by the adults in the building. Having armed guards doesn't do that, mm. but let's say you add more mental health staff who, when a young person walks in and they've had a terrible night the night before and they have the weight of the world on their shoulders, they can unpack that. They can unpack all that emotion and get refocused on learning. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of approaches that center on building up young people that we really need to be focused on. Can I add just a yeah, quick point? Yeah, so I, I did reach out. I, I advised Mayor Belzati in mm -hmm. Brockton when she became mayor. I was on her transition team. I was close with Mayor Carpenter, the foreign, former mayor, mm. uh, and I actually spoke at his funeral. Um, I'm close with Mayor Sullivan. And, and he and I have been communicating on this, and I think one of the things he said to me is, one, is remind people that our students and staff are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Right? So let's, let's center that, that it's a great school with some phenomenal teachers and staff. He also talked about engaging the state delegation to provide more resources for security. Now, to your point about middle ground, there needs to be a middle ground. We still got to keep people safe. Yep. And safety can be done, as you said, best practice. Mm -hmm. We can find a way to do that, and it's not National Guard. I, I hope that we all come together and we really attack this as, as a community. Well, Michael, let me ask you, does the state need to step in at this point? I think, you know, I was, I was in the state house today. Uh, we hosted a briefing today around health equity, yeah. and, and I was in a meeting with Speaker Mariano yesterday, a day before yesterday. You know, they have a good heart, and they're actually paying attention to these Brockton issues. I think there's a role for state to play. Um, I know Congressman Lynch has been engaged with the mayor and others. Maybe there's a congressional role to play. Again, it's resources. We can't afford a $14 million, million dollar hole to impact our ability to keep people safe, to get them the mental health services and supports they need. You said something earlier that was phenomenal. We've got to realize suicidal ideation and suicide attempts are up across the country, particularly in young people. Um, mental health is a growing concern out of COVID. There's no surprise, whether it's Brockton or across the country, we're seeing this di disruptive behavior because children were locked in and they were dealing with their mortality and they didn't get what they needed during that time. All right. Well, we're certainly going to continue the conversation. Leon Smith, Michael Curry, thank you so much. Thank you.